Hey guys, Rick with CMyBeach.com. I'm here tonight with Brian Norcross. How you doing, Brian? All right, I'm doing great, Rick. Excellent. Well, I wanted to catch you a couple minutes before you go on stage. You're about to have a little nice little talk here. Um, one of the things I want to ask you before, because I know I, I saw somewhere you changed where you're working. Where are you working now? So I'm working for a new weather service called Fox Weather. They're based in New York, but I'm still in South Florida and occasionally I'll go up to New York, but I'm just doing hurricanes and I'll still be on Facebook uh, just like uh, always. And while I have a second, I want to get you to meet uh, the guy who's replacing me is a colleague and a great friend, one of the best hurricane people I know on Channel 10. His name is Michael Lowry, you're gonna love him. He's a younger guy and trust me, it's a young guy's business to cover hurricanes in South Florida uh, because it can be just a lot. It's quite a challenge, and you have to it's keep it. It's a like a always learning, isn't it? And always learning, and it's a lot of work. So I've turned it over that over to Michael, and um, I'm really happy to be involved with the uh, Fox Weather people. Uh, they're they're great people, and um, and it's working out well so far. I just started, but it's working out well. That's awesome. Well, you have the book that uh, you know. So many people get inspired by your your the uh, say the name of it. My hurricane, my hurricane Andrew story. My hurricane Andrew story. Yeah, uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I just thought as the 25th anniversary was coming in 2017, if I was ever going to tell the story about you know what my thought process was that ended up with what happened uh, on WTVJ uh, for the coverage of that storm and what I saw and how the community reacted and uh, everything that happened, I thought, well, the 25th anniversary is the time to do it. So I. I uh, buckled down at the end of 2016 and early 2017 and uh, wrote it. It's still on Amazon. People are still uh, buying it because the story still resonates. You know, so many of the things that we live with today uh, to do with hurricanes came out of Hurricane Andrew. It really is the most, most important modern hurricane uh, that's happened. More aspects of the way we live to do with insurance, which is of course very negative, to do with the building codes, which is very positive, and to do with emergency management, which is very positive. All came out of the post-Andrew 1990s period when uh, this community, South Florida, decided we're not going to let that happen again. So we're going to fortify, and um, it was a it was an incredible time all, all the way through. Well, you know, some of the things you probably don't see, but well, you probably hear it all the time. But um, I was talking to someone not long after our first interview, which was, I guess, you know, four or five years ago now, and uh, we did this interview. And then I was talking about you to someone, and a lady told me that she has a grandmother, and she had bought the book for her grandchildren, and she said it was just kind of a really inspirational way to bond the family together. And she actually read them to the kids, and they said it was a really emotional one of the experiences you remember for the rest of your life. Well, there's no question that anybody that went through Andrew will always remember that, not just the storm, but that time. Yeah. Because it was such a, a it was like a war. You know, we, right. we went through a war and we, kind of for the most part, survived. Unfortunately, we did lose 15 people in the storm here, directly in the storm, and then more people after that for right. a variety of reasons. But, but for the most part, we survived and we thrived uh, after that. And, yeah, and it was uh, you know unforgettable for anybody that was here through it, and to share that is really important. Yeah, because uh, you know living here in South Florida means living with hurricanes. Yeah. so we have to understand the lessons of the past if we're going to deal with the storms of the future. Exactly. Well, I'm not going to be able to record everything tonight because you know it's a, it'll be a, it'll be a long thing. So give everybody a little uh, a hint of what you're going to talk about tonight. Well, I'm going to talk about hurricanes and that have affected South Florida and especially Hollywood. Because people today, I think, generally think we're having more hurricanes than we used to, and they're stronger, right? Generally, people kind of have that feeling, but it's not true. Oh, it's not true? <laughs> it's not true. We're actually having fewer hurricanes than we used to, and they're not as strong. So I want people to understand what the hurricane history is here, how many storms have come through here that people dealt with and, and learned from, and reacted to. Uh, I think that's important to understand where you live and what the, uh, the environmental history is right. of uh, where you live. Exactly. Well, I know everybody, everybody can find your book on Amazon. You can also go to briannorcross.com. You have a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say something on a personal level about Brian. Everybody talks about what a good guy you are. Years ago, I guess after, probably a year after our first interview, I called you just out of the blue and I said, we're going to be doing some things related to Hurricane hurricanes in the Florida Keys. 
And I said, you know, I'd just like to ask you some questions and talk to you about it. And I was in Isla Morada and you were in Miami and you went all the way to Homestead for an hour meeting, didn't get paid a penny, just came because that's the kind of guy you are. And I really appreciate it. It meant a lot to us. Rick, I, uh, I appreciate it. And, you know, if it's uh, about hurricanes, you're, you want to talk well, about it. I want, because I want people to understand that we live in the center of Hurricane Alley here. And right. if people are going to live here well, then they're going to learn to live with hurricanes. Now, exactly. We've been luckier over the last several years. Mm. Last, uh, since Andrew, we've been lucky. And here in Broward, we've been lucky even before that. Right. But this is still an incredibly hurricane-prone place historically. And, and the better we live with hurricanes, the better we live. Awesome. Well, you, we have about one and a half minutes before you're going to be pulling you, pulling you on stage. Anything you want to say as a farewell here or getting out of here? I just uh, want everybody to remember that living in South Florida means living with hurricanes. So there's <laughs> nothing you can do but to be prepared. So gotcha. please keep that in mind, top of your mind. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. Okay. We're going to end the interview the same way you probably only remember back in those days, but it's real now. Uh, I've ended all my interviews with the handshake of the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that for 11 years on really? camera, and now they make fun of me. They say, it's, you're it's, uh, it's the real thing. I, I called it ahead of time, right? We got to exactly. do it now. All right, Brian, thank you so much, buddy. Right, I appreciate Rick, it, and you. we'll talk to you later, okay? Take care. All right, Brian, no cross over here. We're here. This is um, Young Circle. I didn't even say that. And uh, Young Circle is in Hollywood, Florida, and we're at Arts Park. So get out there and wow the crowd and do a great job. Thank you, Brian. All right. See you next time, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, guys, we're still backstage now. This is Brandon Orr from Channel 10. How are you doing, Brandon? I am doing wonderful. How are uh, you? Awesome, awesome. How long have you been with Channel 10? Uh, oh, wow. Uh, going on four years now, Okay, actually. It's gone by so fast. Gotcha. Well, I was telling Brandon off camera that I already liked him before I met him because he's, he's I saw, I Googled him last night because uh, Brian mentioned him on the phone. So I Googled you and you're in multiple pictures with dogs and that that's, you know, endears you to my heart. Yes, I moved here from Cincinnati uh, four years ago and we did so much with the SPCA up there. We did a lot of their charity events. We had a lot of pets on the newscast and now we do pets on the newscast and you can find them uh, on weekend mornings. On awesome. The yeah. Awesome. We're going to certainly check that out. Yeah. So what made you want to become a meteorologist? You're pretty young. Uh, I, yeah, I'm still young. I'm 30 years old. Yeah. So I've been in the business. I've been on TV for 10 years now. Okay. Uh, and you know, a lot of meteorologists have some event that just gets them started on it. Right. I don't remember. Really? Like ever since kindergarten, I had, you know, those drawing pictures with crayons of thunderstorms and wow. I don't know what got Well, you know what? It was just something that was kind of innate to you. It was kind of yeah. in, your, in your genes. Exactly. I found what I really loved. I found what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be on TV until I tried it out and someone told me I could actually do it. <laughs> right. And then I just went from there and it took off. Gotcha. Well, anything else you want to uh, message you want to give to people as far as hurricanes or just as far as being a meteorologist? Uh, something that will inspire the kids. Tell the kids about it, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, the, I do so many school talks. I did uh, and hosted the Broward County uh, Youth Climate Summit, okay. Broward County Schools, the other week. Right. And there were so many students who just didn't know exactly what weather was. They see it on TV, they see tornadoes, they see hurricanes, but when they see how it's impacting their community and right. how it's impacting them when they go to the beach right. and how things are going to be different in maybe five years. The connection they're... between the two. Exactly. Yeah. And then they start paying attention and you right. can see that change. You can see them flip when you're talking to them Gotcha. Uh, and it gets them all excited about it. It's is fun speaking to kids. We actually have a nonprofit called helpindolitter.org. It's the acronym for HEAL. Yeah. And me and a, a girl named Isabella Hernandez started that uh, back in 2016. And it enables school children, gives them the tools to go organize litter cleanups together. So we speak in schools, but it's kind of fun to, to listen to kids' points of view uh, on litter and trash. And they you know, think imagine things, it's the same thing with exactly. you. Yes. They think of things in a different way. Yes, they do. They, they do. do. It's a very different perspective than what you and I have. Right. And to hear that and collaborate and put all the ideas together, it makes a big difference. It's pretty exciting. It is. Well, yeah. Brandon, I sure appreciate you giving me a moment to interview you here. Um, and also, we're going to end this uh, interview the same way I just ended it with him and having the last 11 years with the handshake of the 21st century, which Absolutely. is real now. Yes. Thanks <laughs> We've been doing that for 11 years. Thanks, Brandon. Yes. I'll see you after the show, okay? Okay. Sounds good. Thank Take you. Care.